with all the books and I am here with the grand finale of my five star predictions video. I set that five star prediction challenge TBR I guess it's been over a year ago now and I don't know why it took me so long to read these books. I don't even know. Like half of them I read fairly quickly and then there was one that lingered and we'll talk about it. But here we go in the order in which I read them. These are my five star predictions. I will link um, my original video um, for when I predicted these below as well as Mercedes uh, original video in which brilliant woman that she is came up with this concept and shared it with the booktube world so I will link her video as well because she is just fabulous and brilliant and I will link um, the review video for the grand finale of this stack because one of them was single book review video worthy. So let's just get to it. The first one is The Shell Collector by Anthony Doerr. This one is by the author of All the Light We Cannot See, which was um, a World War II narrative and gorgeously written. Um, a lot of people didn't like it as well because it was a bit of a slog fest and I will agree to that but his writing is gorgeous is so gorgeous and a lot of nature woven into it which you know I appreciate so there are still just lines and scenes from that book that are still vividly painted on my mind so when I found out that he had this short story collection, I mean, when I was reading All the Light We Cannot See, I thought he would be a fabulous short story writer, and he is. I really appreciated this. Um, the stories all have definitely an immersed in nature bent to them, and a thing that I wasn't expecting from Anthony Doerr is they all also had a trace of feminist narrative in them. And I was just very delighted and appreciative of that. So, five stars for Anthony Doerr. Yeah, started out great. So, if you like short story collections, you like nature writing, if you liked All the Light We Cannot See, this could be a book for you. Yes. And I will say, before we get to the rest of them, that I found out from this endeavor that I know myself very well. You'll see why I said that in a minute. So, the next one I read was The Weight of Ink by Rachel Kaddish. This is one of those historical fiction novels um, delivered in two timelines. So you've got the modern timeline in which um, some ancient, or not super ancient, not ancient, 1600s, 1600s Jewish writings are discovered in the walls of a home in England and this old professor is given them initially, not given them, but allowed to see them first. And so there's this race against time with this aging professor and her assistant translating the documents and figuring out, you know, the story behind them against a progressive new professor that's trying to elbow into her territory. Uh, so that's the present day timeline which sounds potentially boring. Well, it sounds boring-ish. Um, and the past timeline is set in the 1600s with a Black Plague epidemic and the Jewish community that has um, 
come to London because of the Portuguese Inquisition. I didn't even know that was a thing. I'd heard of the Spanish Inquisition, but not the Portuguese Inquisition. So, of course, the historical timeline was fascinating because it's just interesting characters, but, you know, the historical aspect was fascinating to me. But I had to put this into five-star territory because that modern timeline with the professors doing all this research was a page turner. I couldn't believe it. I just had to see what was happening. And also she does this thing where um, the main characters in the present and the past timeline, um, she flashes back and shows you bits of their lives and how they ended up to where they are today. So the whole thing I just found very entertaining and enlightening, just interesting. And yes, it was another five star read. So that's two. Um, and then I read Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. I'm not sure I need to say anything about this one. It is, um, it was a booktube darling last year is why I say that. Um, but this one is, uh, it starts in Korea with a, a girl who, um, gets pregnant and she's not married and that's not going to work during this, um, point in time in this culture. And a Japanese, um, kind of a missionary ministry kind of person, um, just their, their paths cross in the little town, the village, the community, and he offers to marry her and take her back to Japan and it's their lives there. And you learn about the Korean, um, culture in Japan and, the prejudices against them by the Japanese, and just really neat narrative, and really fabulous um, characters and story, and generational from the, I think, 1900s, yeah, to through World War II, and of course I had to give it five stars, of course. So another fabulous read if you haven't read it yet. Um, and then I read Ann Patchett's Bel Canto, and this one is set in, um, South America. They never tell you which country, and it's about, there's a birthday party at the vice president's home, and some... A rebel guerrilla faction takes over the party and takes everyone hostage. There's an opera singer, and it's really a beautiful story about um, discrepancy between classes and the pain that causes. So I should give this five stars. There's music. Uh, it's a beautiful narrative in the story as well. I didn't quite like the resolution at the end. It was fine, but it wasn't five star resolution. So this was more of a four and a half for me, but if I had had um, four fours and one five in this um, stack, I'd be totally cool with that. So, you know, this was a great book too, definitely. And I picked this one, um, based on the author. I had read um, Ann Patchett's State of Wonder, which I really loved. That one was set in the Amazon. And this one she won a prize for. I forget which prize, but this is her most well-known work, I think, um, outside of Commonwealth, which is her most recent. Um, so I was assuming this would be better. I still love State of Wonder more than this one, but this one was really great, really great. And last and greatest, my man, John Steinbeck, East of Eden. I have a complete video review of this because it was that amazing. So I know we're doing a five star scale here, but this is like a six star. So that brings my average up to five star for this. 
stack. I loved this so much. This is everything I love about John Steinbeck. Everything. And I will just leave the link to my review of this book below. There are no spoilers in it, so feel free to watch it. If you have or have not read John, you'll be fine. Um, but yes, if you are like me, dragging your feet for over a year to get to this one, or you know, a lifetime, go ahead and do it. It is worth it. So yes, thank you Mercedes for a great challenge, and thank you all for watching, and I will be back soon. Bye!